lot to talk about. He doesn't like when I interrupt him. We have a lot to talk about. It's been a while. It's been a crazy week. And welcome back to the vlog. So we made it back from Bermuda, safe and sound. Hope you guys enjoyed all those videos. We had a good time. I uh, came back to about two or three feet of snow. Needless to say, we're missing them beaches. training camp um, great little kickstart to the year awesome country 10 out of 10 would go back you're doing something right Bermuda low-key want a honeymoon there but it's too expensive sorry sorry Bermuda uh, so when I was uh, down there got some pretty sweet news but we're gonna put a pin in that for later <laughs> Have you ever said that before in your entire life? Absolutely. We flew back on Tuesday. Um, probably got back home in London at like... 1? 1. 1 a.m. on the Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll never again leave our car on campus when we go away for an extended period of time <laughs> in the winter because we got back and our car was buried under a lot of snow and we didn't have a snow brush in the car. There was this much snow and like this much ice Yeah. and no snow brush. Uh, so shout out to our chiropractor Evan for letting us borrow his <laughs> uh, snow brush because otherwise uh, the car would still be there. So my last week was very chaotic because um, like I said, we got back to London around like 1 a.m. on the Wednesday and then that evening on the Wednesday I actually flew to Sudbury for a speaking engagement. I uh, was supposed to fly back um, Thursday evening and then Taylor and I were going to drive to Windsor together for uh, to compete at Can-Ams. But weather was so horrendous last week that um, no flights were coming into or out of Sudbury. I was stranded in Sudbury until Friday morning very stressful. Went to the airport at 5 a.m. to take a 7.30 a.m. flight, but that got pushed back till 1. Ended up having to fly straight into Windsor as opposed to London and then driving to Windsor. Um, I drove to Windsor <laughs> and this is what it looked like. And it was pretty stressful. It usually takes hour 45 to get to Windsor from London. Took like two and a half hours, driving like 60. It was pretty bad, so got there right in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so needless to say, last week was a shit show. That's why there's no footage from the meet. Um, it was just too chaotic and- Literally like we got to the track and it was like, go, go, go. We got there. My plane landed at like three. three and I competed at five, so did you. Yeah. Needless to say, not the most conducive conditions for a good performance, <laughs> as we learned. Um, no, we both actually competed pretty average on the Friday. Just average? Just yeah. average. Not great, not terrible. Um, my runway was all over the place. I think my central nervous system was just shot from the day. But um, it's good to be back from full approach and I'm looking forward to kind of building on, uh, on what I put together in Windsor. Um, the next day I did manage to PB in the 60, ran 780, which is pretty exciting. She tied her PB in the first run. 781. And then broke it. 780. In the second run. So, uh, hoping to get uh, closer to the 7.6s as the season progresses. Would you like to tell us about shot put? Oh. Yeah, um, so shot put was okay, um, was kind of rushing out of the back. 
Uh, for those people that throw shot put, you know what I mean. For those that don't, that's not good. Um, so just kind of an average competition and then on my last throw I threw uh, 15 meters even, which is like okay throw for me, but it's good in a decathlon. So on the Saturday I ran a 60, the time wasn't that great, um, and then just kind of my ankle was a little bit sore, so I just didn't want to risk it, so I didn't fault. Um, and because we're still leading up to the uh, heptathlon at York, at the York Open on February 2nd and 3rd, so I just don't want to risk anything. So this week, we're finally getting back into our regular schedule. Um, we're finally home for an extended period of time, um, so. Missed this place. Yeah. Through this morning, uh, we worked on a lot of discus. getting really fluid with the motions. Uh, like you guys saw in the Bermuda, it just looks really awkward and still really rigid, so I'm just trying to smooth that out. Um, so this week, it's just gonna be training for me, um, and next week, and I think the week after that. Um, I'm not competing at Dawn Wright this week, um, just because I want to get a good solid training session in. Training block, I should say. I'm gonna run a 60, do some TJ at uh, Don Wright here in London this weekend um, and just kind of better prepare myself um, because the following weekend I'm actually going to go to New York to compete. Um, there's going to be some good triple jumpers there so I'm looking forward to uh, having a good comp there so just working towards that. So you might be wondering what's the big news? Did they just make the title of that vlog we have big news as clickbait? Yes. <laughs> Got it! <he>. Got it! <laughs> we actually have big news. Just take the pin out of this. Yeah, pin removed. So, when we were down in Bermuda, I got a great email that I had made the Commonwealth team. If you guys follow either of us on Instagram, then you already know that. If you don't, follow Surprise! us on Instagram. So that was like really good news uh, that I received. Um, super excited. This is like the biggest games that I've made in either long jump or the decathlon. So it's gonna be really interesting, fun, scary. So I, me and Damien have never done a decathlon together. So that's gonna be pretty cool that we can compete together. I can try to keep up with him. He can try to throw as far as me, you know. <laughs> it's also really cool that Canada will have three decathletes at these games. Oh yeah, so yeah. The fact that Damien, Taylor, and Pierce all made it, that's pretty amazing. I was asking Vicky, um, when's the last time like three decathletes have like made a team and she couldn't really think of the time. So if you guys know, comment below. Comment. If it's never happened, comment. So these past like two months have been pretty hard on us. Um, so about three months ago, I got another great email to say that I was on the carding list. Uh, the carding list is just national funding for track and field athletes. Um, it's a pretty big uh, chunk of change um, for 
an athlete like myself. But then five weeks after receiving that email, um, I got another email saying that the national sport organization had made a mistake and I wasn't actually getting the funding. Um, so that's pretty hard for... Fired up? No comment. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty hard for an athlete like myself and Caroline um, because we dedicate so much time to pursuing this dream and it's really hard to like for us to work uh, and like be able to support ourselves. So that was pretty hard, um, went through a couple things mentally, emotionally, but you got through it. And you also have to keep in mind that in those five weeks that you thought you were carded, you made plans for your entire upcoming season. So you had a certain vision of what this next year was gonna look like because money was suddenly, for the first time, not an issue for you. And then, you know, five weeks later, that goes up in flames um, that's really tough. And like, if you wouldn't have been carded in the first place, yeah, you would have dealt with it. Like, you haven't been carded in years, you would make it through and there's lots of athletes who do it every day, not carded, but to think that you are, and then have that taken away, like that's just, that was, that was not a fun time and it wasn't even me, you know, it's, it's hard to see someone who deserves it and Anyways, there's a lot more that can be said about that situation, but uh, we'll put a pin in that. Yeah, forever, <laughs> and never talk about it again because uh, and let's just not go there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's lighten things up a bit. Uh, we're gonna finish off with some Australian trivia for you, mate. Um, you might be wondering, Caroline, you didn't make the Commonwealth team. Your man did. Are you still gonna go to Australia? The answer is yes. Yes, I am. That's all. <laughs> but I need to support this this little critter. All right, Australia facts. Fact number one: There are three times as many sheep than people that live in Australia. Think of all the wool. <laughs> <laughs> For all you long jumpers out there, the record jump recorded by a kangaroo is a whopping nine meters with a single leap. I don't know if that's like a broad jump or Bro, bad, like. that's really weird to think that like a human has almost done that. Here's a good one. Koalas sleep about 20 hours a day. You're doing it right, koala. <laughs> Goals. Kangaroos and emus cannot walk backward. One of the reasons that they're on the Australian co coat of arms. So I liked the beginning of that fact, but I don't know why that has anything to do with why they made it onto the coat of arms. All right, so we're gonna do some trivia. Here we go. Questions are for you. I am going to read Australian slang terms. You will guess them. G'day. G'day, hello. Arvo. I don't know if that's an Australian accent, but... No, that wasn't... That's not a knife. This is a knife. Arvo! <laughs> um, like, how you doing? No. Wrong. Arvo. Afternoon. Bobby. Shrimp on the Bobby. Oh. Barbecue. Mosey. Small? No. no. Go? No. Oh. The Moseys are bad today. The bugs? Mosquitoes. Oh. Thongs. Sandals. Yep. Thanks for watching our little update vid. Sorry that it mainly just consisted of us sitting on the couch. You know what? No, I'm not Whoa. sorry. Whoa. Okay. Wow. Shout out to all those new subscribers. We went up to like 15. So, you guys know who you are. Thanks for subscribing. Welcome. Welcome. Keep them coming. What is, what going is happening? On? Welcome. Welcome. <laughs>
Bye. Bye. <laughs> so far away. <laughs>